In this problem, I'm given the equation of the derivative. And I need to use it to find where I have local maximums, local minimums, or points of inflection. So starting from here, if I want to find out where I might have a local maximum or a minimum, um, first of all, I, 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 I just look for my zeros here. It's, it, this is a polynomial that's going to exist on the domain negative infinity to positive infinity. So I'm not going to have any places where the derivative is not going to exist. So where y prime equals 0, well, that's going to be at x equals 1 and where x equals 2. So if I um, set that up on my number line, so here's 0, 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2. And I, I see my intervals are going to be right here at x equals 1 and x equals 2. Well, um, I'm going to test some numbers. Let's test 0. So at 0, I would have 0 minus 1 squared. That's going to be a positive number. In fact, this, this number here is always going to be positive times 0 minus 2, so positive times a negative, this is going to be negative. And then we know that this one here is always going to be positive because we're squaring it. I'll put the positive back there. Let's test something in the interval between, between 1 and 2. So let's test 3 halves. So 3 halves minus 2, that's going to be, well, that's going to be a negative number. So this is going to be negative as well. Let's test something above 2. Let's test 3. So this would be this is going to be positive. 3 minus 2 is positive. So this here is going to be positive. So in order to have a minimum or a maximum, my, my slope has to be changing from either positive to negative or negative to positive. And here I'm changing from negative to positive. So right here at x equals 2, I'm going to have a local minimum. So that is part of my answer right there. But I also need to find out where I might have any points of inflection. So let's take my original function here. Uh, let's copy it. Move it down to the bottom so we can work with it a little bit. That's the first derivative. I think we should find the second derivative. So to find the second derivative, I'm going to use the product rule, uv plus uv prime prime. So the derivative of my first piece right here, my, my, my u, is 2x minus 1 to the first. Well, then it's, the inside is 1, so that would be times 1. Okay? And then that's times v, which is x minus 2. Plus u, x minus 1 squared, times v prime. Well, that's just times 1. So let's work with this. Let's see if we can simplify it a little bit. This is equal to 2x minus 2 times x minus 2 plus, well, x minus 1 squared is x squared minus 2x plus 1. Let's simplify some more. So this is equal to um, 2x squared minus 6x plus 4 plus x squared minus 2x plus 1. So that gives me 3x squared minus 8x plus 5. Um, so this is my second derivative. And if I'm looking for points of inflection, I want to find out where does that equal 0 or where does it not exist. Well, it doesn't exist 
It exists everywhere. It's a polynomial. So I'm not worried about it not existing. But I do want to know where it is equal to 0. So I'm going to factor it. And I'm going to use my surefire method. So I go 3 times 5 is 15. <coughs> and what, <coughs> what factors of 15 give me negative 8? Well, I can see that. That would be negative 3 and negative 5. So I would have um, 3x squared minus 3x minus 5x plus 5. I just changed my negative 8x into those two. If you're unclear on this, watch my video on surefire factoring method. So that is the, I'm gonna, now I'm going to kind of group it. So I have uh, 3x times x minus 1. Minus, now when I grouped it, that turned into a negative sign because this negative sign carries over to there. So this is minus 5 times x minus 1. And I can factor out an x minus 1. So I have x minus 1 times 3x minus 5. So my potential inflection points would be where that equals 0, and that would be a sorry, that would be at x equals 1 and at x equals 5 thirds. So let's set up a number line. 0, 1, 2, 3, negative 1. Well, at 1, that's going to define one of my intervals. 5 thirds, uh, a little bit less than 2. So we'll put it right here. We'll call this 1. We'll call this 5 thirds. And let's test, let's test some numbers. So, we're testing some numbers in here. Let's try at x equals 0. So it'll be 0 minus 1 times 0 minus 5. That will be a negative times a negative. That means that this interval right here is going to be a positive. Let's test one in the next interval. Well, I, I have something between 1 and 5 thirds. I'm going to just try 4 thirds. So I have 4 thirds minus 1 times 3 times 4 thirds <coughs> minus 5. This is going to be positive. These 3's are going to cancel out. That's going to be negative. That means this interval here is going to be negative. Positive times a negative is a negative. Let's try something uh, bigger than 5 thirds. Let's just try 2. So I have 2 minus 1 <coughs> and 6 minus 5. Both those are positive. This is going to be positive. So I can see that I'm going to have inflection points at x equals 1 and x equals 5 thirds. Because the sign of the second derivative changes from positive to negative and then from negative to positive. 